Hello everyone. Warm wishes for this wonderful day. I am Gaurav Jain, an undergrad student at USICT. Today I'm going to discuss with you architecture of 80386 microprocessor. We'll be discussing how this microprocessor work, what was so special about this, and how it is different from 8086 and 80286. And with that stated, I Hope you are already acquainted with uh, the previous microprocessors in the history, like 8086 and 80286, because that knowledge would be helpful in understanding 386 microprocessor. So let's begin. In this 80386 microprocessor, it is also commonly known as I386 microprocessor. And I386, why? Because it was invented by Intel, and uh, the suffix of it is 386. So we have here is some uh, like uh, how it was marketed. It is a look. So yes, about eight zero three eight six microprocessor. It was a thirty two bit microprocessor. It was uh, better than the previous one because the previous one was sixteen bit and it is thirty two bit microprocessor. It had a thirty two bit ALU and this ALU is automatic logic unit and correspondingly it had thirty two bit data bus. And when I had when I said this, it had thirty two bit data bus. So let's just understand. When we have 32 bit data bus, it wants to extract the whole address at one time. So, uh, one memory bank have eight bit of address, which is like one byte of address. So, if I want to have all 32 uh, bit address at the same time, how I uh, will achieve this? I will be having four memory banks. Those four memory banks, each one having eight bit of information. So, total of 32 bit of information. Yes. So, it has 32 bit address bus. And uh, when I say everything is 32, so while calculating the physical memory of uh, this microprocessor, I can say 2 raised to power 32 bit. So 2 raised to power 32 bit, 2 raised to power 30 would be uh, GB, 1 GB, 1 gigabyte, and 2 raised to power 2 would be 4. So it has 4 GB of physical memory. Yes. Now, the major advancement was in operating system. How the earlier processors we had, it was they were like around uh, 10 megahertz only. This 32 bit microprocessor i386 had a range from 16 to 33 megahertz of clock frequency, which is you can consider a great advancement in the clock, uh, clock frequency. The microprocessors are now fast, faster than ever. And this is all the story of mid 80s. So, at that particular moment of time, we are having these advancements. So this 80386 or i386 had two version in market, SX and DX. Let's understand what it does it mean. So SX is single execution and DX is double execution. When I say single execution, it had a 16 bit address first and double execution as the name suggests, it had 32 bit address first. So why would there was a need of SX? So the users who are already using the whole computer system with 8086 microprocessor now to uh, get acquainted with 80386 they have to change their whole system because the address bus and all everything was changed so the architecture of whole computer system was changed and they need to buy a new computer so what intel did it said we will have all the features of 386 just what we have to do is like uh, reduce the address bus from 32 bit to 16 bit and it will be capable of working on a 8086 enabled system so if i have a system and i have 8086 i can just remove that 8086 chip and insert this 80386 sx version and i can easily run this so this was the speciality of sx and dx is double execution which is like the normal microprocessor 386 in this ppt we'll be majorly talking about dx microprocessor only. Moving ahead, the i386 processor had this three stage pipeline, fetch, decode, and execute. So these three pipeline, these three stage pipeline, every uh, operation, whether it is fetching, decoding, or executing can run parallelly. So let's say there is one instruction being executed. So there is another execution parallelly being decoded and parallelly there is another execution being fetched. So this is what it meant by three stage pipeline. Moving ahead, biggest advancement in i386 processor was at 64 terabytes of virtual memory so yes i repeat 64 terabytes at that time mid 80s having one or two gb of uh, hard drive was so difficult and at that particular time intel came up with this processor and having this feature of 64 terabytes of virtual memory so this virtual memory can be implemented using secondary storages 
So yes, the i386 processor had 64 TB of virtual memory. Moving ahead, it had the properties of segmentation, paging, and protection mechanism. And these all three made the system more secure, more advanced, and faster in implementation. Yes, I will be seeing all these three features separately ahead. This protection mechanism made the system so secure. We had these various level PL0, PL1, PL2, PL3. Don't worry, we'll be seeing those. At that time, operating systems such as Windows starting coming into existence. So this uh, multitasking feature needs to be there in the microprocessor because the operating system is multitasking. The microprocessor needs to be synchronized in a multitasking way only. So this i386 processor had this multitasking. So uh, i386 processor worked in three modes, which are protected mode, virtual mode, and virtual real mode. So uh, this protected mode, we have uh, 80386 processor was uh, working in almost similar way. We had this 80286 processor, but the difference was it provided higher memory addressing ability. Everything is same. The system is protected, but it provides higher memory addressing ability. We'll see. We'll be seeing that in detail ahead. So in this uh, virtual mode or V86 mode, why it is called V86. So what happened is like 80386 provided an ability to divide it itself into various virtual machines, which then can act separately as a 8086 microprocessor. So we'll be having several instances of 8086 microprocessor running at the same time. And all of them will be in a virtual machine and they will be separated from each other that's why it's called virtual 8086 mode because you will be having this essence of 8086 in 80386 yes that's the beauty of 80386 microprocessor and the last one is uh the real mode or the virtual real mode which is uh like the same as we had the previous one so yes and uh, the essential property which i already told you that we have these all the uh instances working separately, parallelly, independent from each other. So if one crashes, the other doesn't get affected. He, this was also there in a real mode. Yes, so what you can see on the screen right now is the architecture of 80386, how it is behind the uh, that particular chip, uh, how it is working, what all it's inside it. So firstly, we can see there is a bus interface unit. Then we have this code prefetch unit, we have instruction decode unit. Then we have this execution unit. And at last, we have this memory management unit. So we'll be seeing these one by one. Before that, we'll be seeing how our registers organized in 80386, because that will help us in understanding these independent units in a better way. So as I told you, uh, we have five functional units, bus interface unit, also known as BIU, which is bus interface unit, acronym for the same. Then code fetch unit, instruction decode unit, execution unit. These are the part of three stage pipeline uh, we already discussed. And at last we have this memory management unit, which have two uh, sub parts, segmentation and paging unit. Yes. So this is the register organization of 80386. We have these general purpose registers and we have segment registers. Then we have instruction pointers. And at last we have these flag registers. And uh, all these, we have the segment registers are divided into various segments. Let's see how uh, these segments uh, perform, how all these segments function, what's their offset. So CS or the code segment have the instruction addresses and its offset is EIP, which is extended instruction pointer. And then we have SS, which is the stack segment and it stores the stack address. Uh, the offset is ESP and EBP, which are corresponding to stack pointer and base pointer in 80286, which is now ESP and EBP, extended stack pointer and extended base pointer in 80386. Then we have this DS, which is the data segment. It had these general purpose registers, EAX, EBX, ECX, EDX, ESI, EDI. All of them are the same just with an E. And what this E specifies is it's an extended version. So earlier we had only 16 bit. Now we can, with this EAX, we can have a 32 bit number in them. So yes, these are uh, these stores the data addresses, which is pretty known to all of us. Then we have ES, which stores the string destination address. And uh, the offset would be EDI for string instruction. And after that, this FS and GS, the both are uh, like they don't have any default offset, but these are general address registers. 
So this was an overview of how register uh, are organized in 80386. Now let's jump back to the architecture, how each uh, independent unit functions and how they are related to register organization. So firstly, we have bus interface units, which are BIU, and these, as the name suggests, have a 32-bit bidirectional bus. So in this bidirectional bus, the uh, uh, like they have this interface between external buses and the coprocessors. Along with that, they connect the peripheral devices and the memory unit. So the all the functions of bus are implemented here using bus interface unit. Then we have this code prefetch unit. The code prefetch unit, as the name suggests, fetches the instruction from the memory and store them in a 16 byte prefetch queue. And when I say queue, queue is uh, first in first out uh, data structure. So the instruction which is uh, having higher priority, which came in first will be executed first. So it maintains a queue. Also the code prefetch unit has a lower priority than data transferring. So let's say there is an instruction for data transfer and at the same time, our instruction is being fetched. So first priority would be given to data transferring and uh, the whole uh, control of the system would be given back to bus interface unit to perform this data transfer. So uh, the code prefetch unit has a lower priority than data transfer. So next we have instruction decode unit. The instruction decode unit, it decodes the instruction which is present in machine language that is like your binary language. It converts them into assembly language so that those can be executed. So now let's consider this is your queue, which is like the prefetch queue. So this fetch queue will have this instruction entering from the rear side and exiting from the front side, which is a property of a queue. So uh, once the instruction has been uh, like taken from the front to the instruction decode unit, the instruction decode unit after decoding will have its own decode instruction queue. As you can see in this diagram, it have its own decode instruction queue, which is like it decodes the instruction and store it in its own queue. And this queue will be directly connected to the execution unit. So moving to execution unit, this execution unit will execute the decode, uh, decoded instruction, which was earlier stored in this queue, will now be uh, executed using ALU, the arithmetic logic unit, and the other uh, units, which are barrel shifter, multiply, divide, and uh, the registers along with them. So it have a 32-bit uh, ALU because it's a 32-bit microprocessor. So it has a 32-bit ALU and it performs uh, the operation over 32-bit uh, data in one cycle. Okay. So, uh, and for performing uh, the register, the register organization we discussed, it consists of eight general purpose register and eight special purpose registers for the whole execution process. Next, we have the last memory management unit. So this memory management unit directly interfaces with your memory and it uh, manages how the whole instruction will be uh, in synchronization with the memory. So it have two parts, segmentation unit and paging unit. The segmentation unit gives a four level protection to the data or the code present in the memory. So when I say four level uh, protection, you can understand how much protection does 80386 microprocessor provide. So back in that time, mid eighties, the coming up of more and more viruses was, uh, were there in the market. Uh, so the protection from the side of hardware, which is like the microprocessor became really important. How and how they achieved it. 80386 had four levels, which is PL0, PL1, PL2, and PL3. And according to the priorities, all the tasks and memory was divided into these four categories. So uh, what uh, happened was like, PL0 holds the highest priority and PL3 holds the lowest priority. So the instruction stored in PL0 can access all the memory from PL0, 1, 2, 3, down to uh, like everything. And this PL3 was the lowest in, uh, and it can, it can only access the memory and the instructions there in PL3. It cannot go back to PL0. So generally all the operating system commands were stored in PL0 and uh, the lower execution level stuff, uh, the programmer phase wa uh, was there in PL3. So similarly, all this was this level of segmentation we have in 80386. Next, we have this paging. So paging, uh, like before uh, going there, we can, uh, there's a property paging works only in protected mode. So uh, because it provides a protection and how it provides a protection, you have this linear address. It converts this linear address into physical address. So what happened was like 8086 uh, processor uh, have, this capacity that programmer can directly address the memory. It can directly access the memory. A 386 processor 
said that you cannot do that. The programmer can give the virtual address. The real physical address will be calculated by the 386 microprocessor. And uh, while calculating, uh, the paging unit will come into existence. It will convert your linear addresses into physical addresses of the memory. So here in this memory management unit, we have this protection test unit. Then we have this adder, register, limit, attribute, PLA, adder, page, cache, control, and attribute, PLA. So uh, this paging, how it converts linear address into physical address, it had the pages of 4K bytes and uh, it was divided into those pages and the whole process goes there in that way. So yes, memory management unit, segmentation and paging. Segmentation, having the four levels of uh, protection and uh, protecting the data and uh, memory code and paging, converting linear addresses into physical addresses. This was an overview of memory management unit. So what we have seen uh, coming back to uh, the main architecture diagram. So we have this bus interface unit, which uh, interfaces with the whole uh, microprocessor and the peripheral devices. And then we have this code prefetch unit to fetch the instruction, then decode unit to decode it, execution unit to execute it. And at last we have this memory management unit to interface with the memory and the GPU. So this was whole 80386 microprocessor and its architecture. So yes, with this, we come to an end on how this 80386 microprocessor works and what's so special about it. So I hope this was uh, clear to you all. And uh, at the end, I would like to express my heartfelt gratitude to Dr. Kamaldeep Kaur Ma'am, uh, our teacher for microprocessor for her guidance and continuous support. Thank you all. Have a wonderful day.